Welcome back, folks. In the last video, we learned all about revisors. Well, actually, we didn't learn all about revisors. We just learned a little bit about revisors. We learned the most important thing, which is, of course, that uh, revisors create a revised filter context, and then once they've done so, they take a sub-expression, uh, unfreeze it, and then run it in those new filters. All right, so uh, that's all fine and well and good. Uh, but how do you change the filters using a revisor? What are the different ways you could use that revisor to get the filters just where you want them so that when you unfreeze and run that sub-expression, you get the number or the date or whatever that you want just perfectly? So that's what we're going to uh, be looking at here in this video. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the Concepts Modes tab, right? or worksheet, I guess, technically. So, uh, hey, there's two ways that you could change the filters using a revisor. We talked about this in the previous one, and, and here they are. Uh, there is a current row filtering, right, which is where you add any value of the current row as a filter, and that is automatic. And there are also, uh, the other way is using override filters, right? These are temp tables that you provide as arguments to the revisor, which get added as filters, right, explicitly. Okay, so how do these work? Well, Let's start with current row filtering. Let's say that we've got uh, a nice, ordinary, boring iterator like average x. Uh, I don't mean boring in a pejorative way. I just mean nothing special about it, right? So there's average x right there. We're going to get this temp table. We're going to add a column to it. Hey, oh, hey, look at that. Previously, when we added a column to an iterator, the definition of that column was always very short. It was like this number plus this number, or this equals this. Now, now the definition of our expression column is kind of long, and importantly, very importantly, it includes this revisor right there. Calculate. There's the revisor. Okay. So this goes from line three to eight. That's why it's grayed out right there. And I can kind of imagine this, where we get we get all the dishes and we add this column to it. I can kind of imagine it looking like this, right? Where we get all the dishes one, two, three. We're going to start off by assuming that we've got an empty filter context. So we get all three dishes: pasta, burger, and salad. And then we add uh, a column with this definition. So there, there, and there. So what what does this do uh, when it runs? How do we actually get the numbers in this column? Well, what we're saying here is for each and every row, the revisor calculate. Uh, it wants to run this sub-expression. It wants to, but right now um, it's going to start by freezing it because it's not ready yet. Because it has to get the filters just right before it can run it. So what does the calculate function do? Well, the calculate being a revisor, it's going to start by performing current row filtering and go say, hey, are there any uh, values of the current row? Well, sure enough, there's one right there. Uh, dish equals pasta. Calculate says, ah, I'm going to change the filters by adding the value for the current row. I'm going to add a filter for dish equals pasta. So it creates a new revised filter context with dish equals pasta for that cell right there in that row. And then once it's done with that, it will unfreeze this sub-expression, right? This kind of boring builder um, boring builder that we've got right there. And it will run it, right? And it will get five, which is going to end up being pasta units, right? So uh, it will then do the exact same thing for the next row, right? It's the same, uh, same formula, if you will. The only difference here is that now the revisor is going to get run uh, in this row, where the uh, the dish is not equal to pasta, but equal to burger. Well, just like before, the revisor, calculated in this instance, wants to run this sub-expression, but before it can do it, before it can unfreeze it, it has to revise the filters. So calculate says, all right, I'm going to go revise the filters. Are there any uh, values of the current row? Well, sure enough, there's one right there. Dish equals burger. So uh, calculate the revisor adds a filter for dish equals burger. Then it will unfreeze that sub expression right there, right? That little builder pattern. Uh, run it and uh, get the number six, right? Which is the number of units for burgers, right? So above we got five because that was pasta units. Here we get six because that is burger units, right? Okay, so uh, last uh, cell, last row. You guess where this is going? The revisor says, okay. I want to um, unfreeze and evaluate this sub-expression, but before I can do it, I have to revise the filters. That's the reason that I exist. It's a lonely existence, but it's an important one, right? So uh, Calculate says, are there any values in the current row? Sure enough, there is. Uh, dish equals salad. Now, we could have uh, multiple values if it was a bigger table, but right now this is a one-column table. So it's just dish equals salad. Calculate says, ah, I see you. I'm going to take that value, dish equals salad. Calculate will then add it as a filter. And then once it's added a filter for dish equals salad, right? it will then unfreeze the sub-expression and run it, uh, getting the number one. Now note, in each and every one of these rows, the sub-expression here for the revisor is identical. It's the same there, there, and there. The reason when we run it in each one of these rows we get different numbers is because the calculate function, the revisor, 
added the current rows values as filters, right? Which is why we get POS units here, burger units here, and salad units there. And by the way, when we average five, six, one, we get four, which is the actual, you know, average units per dish, which is sort of what we would expect. This is sort of the, the behavior that we usually want in a calculation like this. And we could uh, break it. We can make it not work pretty spectacularly if we get rid of that revisor. What do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine, same scenario. We start with an empty filter context, right? And we run this bit of code right here. So the only difference between this and this is that the expression column uh, down here, it doesn't have uh, a revisor. It does not have the calculate function surrounding this little bit of code right here, this little builder pattern. Up here, it does. So what does this mean? What is, how, how does it behave? Well, this, again, it's the same as this, but uh, no calculate. What is that? Uh, how does that affect the behavior? Well, now, for this cell right here, right? There is no machinery. There is no bit of instructions that say, go find the current values of the, of the values of the current row and add them as filters. Because of that, uh, the filter for dish equals pasta never gets added for this row right here. And so when we run this little bit of code, because the filters are still empty because nothing ever changed the filters, well, if I run you know this bit of code, I get the total units not for pasta, but for everything, which is 12, right? And if I do that same thing for the second row, even though burger's sitting right there, uh, I never ever tell it to add uh, filters for the current row using a revisor like Calculate. Because I don't do that, when I run this, I get the same result as up here because the filters are the same. I get 12, uh, I get 12 there just like I got 12 here. And on the third row, it's the same story, right? Even though salad is right there, I don't have the correct function. I don't have the correct machinery. I don't have that revisor which says go add the current the values of the current row as filters before you run this little bit. And so when I run it, uh, the filters are exactly uh, the same way they were here, here, right? Which is to say uh, here and here, which is to say they are empty. And therefore, when I run it here, I get 12, just like I got there, just like I got there. And if I take the average of 12, 12, and 12, well, that's 12, the business meaning of which uh, is, of course, absolutely nothing. This doesn't mean anything. This is kind of a, um, a, a newbie mistake that you will see often. Uh, I will see people do things like this where they take uh, average X and then, you know, values or some table derivation, and they put a bit of code like this expecting that somehow magically um, it will automatically it will automatically take the value of the current row and add it as filters. Uh, and it will, and it will, emphasis on automatically, it will if and only if you use the calculate uh, function or some other revisor to do that process. The revisor is the machinery that adds the current value, uh, the, the values of the current row as a filter, right? Okay, so, 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 that is one way we can use revisor to change filters. There is another one, and that is override filters. Now, current row filtering is automatic, uh, which is to say you cannot turn it off. Whenever you use a revisor, the very first thing it always does, it always does, it go, is, go to try, is go and try and perform current row filtering. In addition, though, you can... You can uh, give it, uh, give the revisor temp tables, which the revisor will then add as filters before it unfreezes the sub expression and runs it. Right. So let's let's um, instead of starting with the the correct example, let's start with sort of the the incorrect example. Let's say that what we want is to get the total lunch units, and so we write a bit of code that looks like this, and we kind of know that this isn't going to work, but we run it anyways, and you know maybe the hopes that somehow magically it works. Uh, right, we go get all the rows of the mini table. We sum up all the units, and we get 12. And uh, you know, we we check the books, and it turns out 12 is the total number of all units, not lunch units. Well, the reason we're looking at all units and not lunch units is because nowhere in the code did we say, "Hey, go ahead and add a filter for shift equals lunch." Right? If we want to add a filter for shift equals lunch, and we don't want to use current row filtering to do it, the other option is to use a revisor and say, "Hey, I've got this revisor. Calculate." There's the sub-expression that I want to run after I change the filters. And the way that I want to change the filters is comma, argument 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10,000, right? Every argument past that first one, every argument past the, um, the sub-expression, right, that's frozen, every other one is going to uh, get turned into a table. It turned into a table that calculate, or the revisor, will add as a filter. So... Here, uh, this little bit of code produces a temp table for shift equals lunch, and it's not a filter yet, right? It's not a filter. It's just a temp table, but then calculate takes that temp table and adds it to the filter context. It adds a filter for shift equals lunch, and then it says, hey, are there any other overrides you've given me? Oh, no, just the one? Okay, good. Now that I've got all my override filters in place, I can unfreeze my sub-expression and run it, and when I do, I get seven because when I ran this sub-expression, 
right? Unlike down here, I had a filter for shift equals lunch because the calculate revisor added it, right? And that is what it does. For what it's worth, it does per current row filtering before it does override filters, and you can do both. Although I will say, uh, for most new users, you will do either one or the other. That just tends to be an easier way to, to work with it when you're starting out, okay? So uh, that's kind of the, the, the high level of these two different ways of doing it. But frankly, I think sort of seeing these guys in action a little bit more, a bit more graphically, will be helpful to you. And that's what we're going to do in the next two videos. So I do hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.